All right, hello and welcome. My name is Jason Welsh. I'm going to show you a really cool way to learn how to use schematics. So here I have a schematic that I downloaded off the internet, something really simple to show you. This is comic book backing board. I have this on a piece of tape. This is taped down to my light table. This is uh, it's shiny on one side, dull on the other. They use this for comic books to preserve them. Uh, what I'm going to do is just tape that at the bottom so it doesn't slip around. If you don't trust your drawing ability, I would use a pencil for the first thing. These are two touch points for the circuit. And um, what I'm going to do is kind of put those down here a little bit and make this more into an artsy piece. Okay, so there we go. So let's say I, I put those down here and when the person touches right here and right here, it'll light up. Okay, so try to keep things in a straight line because that way you can use this brass or the copper tape. And if I was to do that, I would probably bring this around. And this is shiny on one side, so it's really easy to erase on if you screw up. Okay, like that. that. I'm just being really kind of sketchy about this. Uh, nothing about rulers or anything like that. Okay, so there's a resistor here. Just kind of mark it just like it is. I know a transistor isn't this big, so I'm going to close this gap up a little bit. What's nice about this is that you can scale this down too. Um, but, you know, when you first start out, especially if you're a little kid, um, you know, just make it really big, just like a coloring book. Okay, let's mark out our plus, mark out our minus. And a lot of times these are explained on the schematic but um, so this is an LED and on this side is the anode cathode so the anode is actually the positive so look for the triangle look for the base of the triangle and that's the that's the positive it's the negative make sure you label your transistors so this is a C B E E. E. All right, and we already have the values of the resistors. So what I'm going to do now is, you know, now, now that I have the basic sketch of things, I can refine that a little bit, or I can go right to tape. It doesn't really matter. If, if you're getting into it just for the first time, I would say a Sharpie marker works really well. And then you find yourself a ruler, which I forgot to grab. This works out really well. Now you can turn your light table off because that way you can kind of see a little bit better.
stick it like that. To use it as a reference point for the straight edge. It's nice to think about using a triangle. keep everything kind of straight. And you can use reference points in your in the drawing. There we go. and we can get inventive right in here. So there's my there's my circuit. Kind of cool, right? All right. So now let's go to the next step where I show you how to uh, put the the copper tape down. Very easy step. All right. So the, for this next part, I'm just going to put some copper tape down. You can see there's a resistor here that I forgot to put in here. That's okay. I'll put the copper tape around that and no big deal. Okay, you can buy this um, at a hobby store. They use it for taking and putting um, stained glass windows together. So, really cool stuff. It's like six bucks for a huge roll of it. A roll lasts you quite a while. And um, I'm using either an X-Acto knife or uh, a pair of scissors if you're kids. Or you can use a pair of these, okay? So depending on who's using this and when, um, I like using the X-Acto knife. But in the video, I'm just going to use these clippers. And I might use an X-Acto knife just to clean it up a little bit. So I go past the corners just a little bit. Again, um, after doing this so many times, I've, I've got to the point where I just clean up the corners with the exacto knife. It's a lot easier. Because I'm one of those dads that believe in giving the, <laughs> the blades to the youngins early. You respect them better that way. Let them play with fire. Let them play with sharp objects. Well, within reason. I would say ages six and up. With constant supervision. Okay, there we go. Pretty cool, right? I mean, think about this. The, this is, this allows anybody to sort of um, and play around with the schematics. After you, after you make a couple of these, you're going to realize you can change this up quite a bit and make it as artsy as you want, as long as, you know, like the same points connect. So I'm just going to finish this out and I'll meet you back in the next video here. Alright, so there we go. And I provided that little gap right there for the resistor. So now I'm just kind of cleaning up the corners. Let's see if I can get some light in here without totally washing out the film. There we go. So 
So very easy. You just kind of score it and tear. Just like that. And sometimes you gotta go over it just a couple times. I go over it really light. That way you don't cut into the backing board too much. And there we go. So I'm going to clean this up a little bit using the X-Acto knife. And after I cleaned it up, I'll show you the next step. Alright, so you have a couple of different options now. Uh, one, you can solder. Okay, I prefer the soldering method. If you have little kids, um, you use this stuff called bare paint and you can go over the top of all these little joints right here because when two pieces of tape meet that doesn't mean there's actually a connection there it just means they're on top of each other so um, we have to solder those those joints the sticky side of this does not promote a good connection and that's why the solder has to be there so I prefer solder um, again if you've never soldered before it's one of these things where See if I can't adjust the camera to see this stuff. Come on, I know it's better than that. That's better. Yep, you can see the resolution of my hands and how gnarly they are. Okay, go like this, and here's your soldering iron. This is just flux filled solder. That's it. So you're just soldering all these pieces that are connected. Again, you can use the bare paint. You can get that at Radio Shack now. Go figure. They sell something other than track phone. They're starting to get in some really cool stuff. I don't know. So just a couple more joints and once I get that done I'll meet you in the next part. Alright so you can cut out shapes and have fun with it. Uh, you can get bigger tape. If you go to sparkfun.com they have really wide tape and they have the thinner stuff too. So if you're looking for one place to get both that's a great place to go. Uh, I think this roll is like $14. I bought it countless years ago and I still have it. So um, I do do this a lot and I still have a lot of tape. So there you go. Get a roll of the really thick stuff. Alright, so these are transistors. Okay. And you have to bend these out to fit. Um, they read commonly like this, E, B, C, E, B, C. So Edward is on your left, okay, for this package type. But make sure you read your package, because sometimes they're different. And this one's like from Radio Shack. So if you look, uh, emitter-based collector, and you're like, oh yeah, that's great, I'm just going to go like this. But that's actually the bottom view, so you got to go like that to read the bottom view. So emitter base collector. But check this because I've seen it so they're backwards once in a while. Once in a great while. If you just get them from Radio Shack and you can see you can get a pack of them. Includes five of 3094. These are all just about the same uh, for these beginning circuits. So you don't have to go uh, looking up data types or anything like that. Usually any NPN transistor will work for these. Okay, so how you bend these, um, and this is going to be fun with the, with the camera. So you go like that. So you grab them from the top, like that. So bend it like 
<laughs> I've been working with this stuff called bare paint and it gets in your fingernails, it gets in everything, it sucks. So just like that. Okay, then um, you can put that down on your schematic, just like that. Uh, I usually take just a little bit of hot milk glue and just kind of plop it down and then solder it into place onto the, the copper tape. Alright, so I already have those kind of in place. I just want to show you how to bend those. And um, one of the other things that you sh should do so I got these resistors. I want the sensitivity to be a little bit higher on this, so I'm using 10k ohm. You'll learn after time of doing this and playing around that you can change these resistor values a little bit. But uh, for me, I wanted a 10k ohm. Now some schematics are not like that. Best way I found is not work through the math at a young age, but build them some of these. Uh, these are a potentiometer with little alligator clips. So what you can do here is you solder on a thing I call a tail. And a tail looks just like this. You take a piece of this brass or copper tape. And you go like that. And you cut it right here. And then you solder that on right here and here. And then you can crimp on this to the and adjust the circuit as needed and you can see how much sensitivity you want. After you're done you can take a multimeter, put it to home, clamp it, and it gives you the ohm value. Now if you push it, put it down, see how it settles down? So don't hold the multimeter while you're doing this because it'll pick up your value next to ground. Don't do that. So 81K. So if I use 10K, maybe that's too much. So all right, I changed my mind because um, that one seems to be wanting 100K. So there we go. I adjusted it earlier with the potentiometer. I, I like doing that. Um, it, I know the voltage of that LED is 3.4, so I got it to about 3 volts. And these are rechargeable batteries in here. Another thing I would recommend is not using rechargeable batteries for young students because what will happen is if they crimp the alligator clips together, um, they will potentially catch fire, and I've seen it. so. So you put a little hot milk glue down, put your resistor in place, or whatever component that you have. Grab your soldering iron. it into position. Take your cutters. Cut off any of the long stuff. And there we go. So we're just building that circuit up on the paper. So if you want to, let's say, hook a battery to it, again, you can either mount the batteries. Here's one I did earlier. This is a photo sensitive, so if it gets dark, the LED turns on. I just mounted the, the batteries on the back. Got okay, a little cool switch to turn it on and off. Here's a really good example of a schematic on paper using that same kind of method. 
if you don't want to mount your batteries, just put a tail there. Put a tail there, and let's solder that. And I'm also going to secure it with hot melt. Cool. And I'm just going to put some hot melt on there. Now it's secure from coming up over time if you keep testing this circuit. So, I have my positive, got my negative. Later on I found that the resistor here was unneeded. Um, I have a higher LED for that. So I'm just going to bridge that gap real quick to kind of show you what this does. So I'm just touching those across. So if you ever need to fix some of that stuff, it's real stupid simple. You just grab yourself a piece of this copper tape and bridge it across just like that. And you can see I didn't solder that and it still works. But I like to use a solder just in case. And then just have them measure the voltage across there and should be good to go. So I hope you enjoyed this. Um, it, it is fun and it's one of those things that you'll get addicted to just because you'll want to try out some stuff and show off your work and people will walk up to it and play with it. Now there is a way to make it so it's less ugly as far as um, having all these things and you can see that I could touch different parts here and they can play around with that but you can take another piece of this comic book backing and cut out the holes where the, the components are and where the switch is and you can cover up the entire schematic and in this case I would this would be easy to do because the batteries wouldn't be in the way and I can cover all this schematic up and just have a little hole right where that is and a little hole where the LED is, and that's it. So, pretty neat. Alright, so I hope you enjoyed, and have a good one.